The Acolyte showrunner Leslie Headland has a new interview that just became available today. As always, Headland says some really interesting and perhaps divisive things. Today, she talks about her queer nature as a filmmaker and how this will impact the upcoming show, The Acolyte. Let's get into it. The Acolyte is an upcoming American television series created by Leslie Headland. It is part of the Star Wars franchise set at the end of the High Republic era before the events of the main Star Wars films. Amanda Stenberg and Lee Jung Jae star in the leading roles. The first episode will debut sometime in 2024. In an interview with Empire that just released today, Leslie Headland made some very interesting statements about her childhood, personal life, and being a Star Wars showrunner. Empire reports. Though we don't know who exactly is the big bad, Headland is keen to emphasize the focus will be on female villains. It goes back to her early fascination with them. Headland says, When I was a younger queer girl, I was just hanging out with Ursula, the sea witch from The Little Mermaid. As a queer girl growing up, if you don't identify with the heroes and the villains show up and they're all queer coded, you're like, yes, that's me. Headland also says about her upcoming show, The Acolyte, as a queer filmmaker, you're going to see some camp, inevitably, but I would say that tonally our references are darker. If the term queer coded is new for you, here's what it apparently means. Queer coding is the subtextual coding of a character in media as queer. Though such a character's sexual identity may not be explicitly confirmed within their respective work, or they may in fact be straight despite their queer mannerisms, a character might be coded as queer through the use of traits and stereotypes recognizable to the audience. Such traits are greatly varied, but traits of exaggerated masculinity and femininity, vanity, and hypersexuality are frequent. Queer coding is a concept both in discussion of media portrayal of LGBT people and academic research involving queer theory or gender studies. Well, now that I know what it means, it's obvious why Leslie Headland is talking so much about it. Here we go again with Star Wars. We're there on a mission where good old-fashioned storytelling takes a back seat to agenda-driven modern-day politics. Star Wars used to be about escapism. It no longer is. As proof of this, let's look at how the Empire interview article with Leslie Headland finishes, saying, Ultimately, this is a show about power, and who is allowed to wield it? The Force is powerful. It is power we must respect, runs a line of dialogue from Lee's character, spoken in the Celebration-exclusive teaser, and Headland promises a mystery thriller that reflects our own world. Headland says, When you're doing something completely original, like we are, you want to question the status quo of the era that you live in. What I think is so interesting right now is that everybody thinks they're right. The Jedi really think they're right. And George Lucas tells us that they're wrong in The Phantom Menace. They missed a huge aspect of the dark side rising. That just felt like fertile ground to look into what's going on for all of us right now. It may still be set a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, but this version of Star Wars might feel closer to home than ever. And therein lies the problem, folks. This isn't shaping up to be Star Wars at all. Most importantly, let us know in the comments what you think about Headland's interview and this upcoming series, The Acolyte. Thank you for coming to EBN today, where we will continue to hold Lucasfilm accountable and demand the return of great Star Wars. We are, you are, Echo Base Network. May the Force be with you, and I'll see you on the next one.